Hello and welcome to this video on what to do when you get a negative Cronbachs alpha. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials related to psychometrics and multivariate statistical methods, often related to structural equation modeling or latent class analysis and often using the M plus software. So this video here actually is not about M plus. This is a general video on Cronbach's alpha. One question that I often get or sometimes get from um, people is about Cronbach's alpha and whether Cronbach's alpha can be negative or from people who consult with me and they found for their data a negative Cronbach's alpha and they are confused. So here I want to explain, so to say, why this can happen and what you can do about it. And for this, I'm going to use an illustration that uses a free online Cronbach's Alpha calculator that I find extremely useful that was um, designed or developed by Dr. Patrick Wesser. You can find the reference to this free software here at the bottom and you can find the web address here at the top. So this is an extremely useful calculator that allows you to calculate um, Cronbach's alpha from your own data for free online. And so if you need to use it, please use it and please cite um, his um, reference here at the bottom for this calculator if you use it. So here you can see an example where Cronbach's alpha for my three items that I analyzed here, Y1, Y2 and Y3, is negative 0.6932. So under all items, this is the Cronbach's alpha for all three items combined. And so now we all know, or we should know that Cronbach's alpha is a measure of reliability derived from classical test theory, from the model of tau equivalence and or the model of essential tau equivalence. So it is for a set of items that follow the classical test theory model of either essential tau equivalence or strict tau equivalence, measure, meaning the items are supposed to measure a single factor, single latent variable with equal loadings. They're supposed to be unidimensional and have the same weights or factor loadings on that single dimension or latent factor. And then you can use Cronbach's alpha to estimate their reliability from a set of data if they are um, or can be assumed to be tau equivalent or essentially tau equivalent. And so as um, a matter of fact, or as um, is so to say by definition the case in classical test theory, a reliability measure can only vary between zero and one, or can only take on values between zero and one, because a reliability measure is a coefficient of determination, or we could say an R squared type measure, where um, zero means that there's zero variance that is true score variance in our composite and one means 100% of the variance in our composite or some score across these items would be true score variance. And so it doesn't make sense to have a negative score because you can't have negative true score variance or a negative proportion doesn't make sense. Negative proportion of true score variance. So that's what Cronbach's alpha means. It gives you the proportion of true score variance if you were to form the composite, a sum or average score of the three items here, then so say under the assumption of tau equivalence or essential tau equivalence, Cronbach's alpha would give you the composite reliability or reliability of the sum score. And again, having a negative composite reliability of negative 0.69 doesn't make any sense. So why did this happen? Now let's take a look at these other statistics here for a moment and you can see that this um, online calculator is neat enough to also provide us with Cronbach's alpha when a specific item is deleted from the composite. And so you can see if we were to exclude the first item, we would get an even more negative, so say Cronbach's alpha, negative 2.21. If we excluded Y2 similarly, we would get negative 2.91. So again, it doesn't make any sense. But then if we excluded Y3, all of a sudden we would get a positive Cronbach's alpha that is still relatively decent given that it would only 
um, then B for two items, Y1 and Y2 only, if we deleted item Y3. And so then you get a positive um, Cronbach's alpha all of a sudden if you deleted Y3 and formed a scale or composite only with Y1 and Y2. So this should um, uh, give us pause and this should uh, show us, so to say, or give us a hint as to what the problem is here. And the problem here is that the item Y3 has a different polarity compared to the other items, meaning it is reverse coded and it therefore correlates negatively with the two with the two other items. So it has a negative covariance or negative correlation with the other two items. And so this is something that is unexpected under the model of essential tau equivalence or strict tau equivalence. We assume or it's implied by this model that all covariances between the items are positive and that they are the same too. So that's another implication of tau equivalence is that all items have the same positive covariance in the population. Now if you have um, empirical data, so sample data where uh, an item or a variable has a negative covariance, it typically means that this item should be recoded or this variable hasn't been recoded properly. So for example, you might have a three item subjective well-being scale and the first item may be I am happy, the second item may be I am satisfied and then the third item may be I am unhappy. And so to make it a little bit more interesting, you might ask people positively and negatively worded questions, but then as a result, the third item, which is negatively worded, will correlate negatively with the two positively worded items. And so what you want to do then is you want to recode that item so as to get positive covariances between the items because otherwise Cronbach's alpha doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense to compute Cronbach's alpha for a scale where some of the items are positively correlated and some items are negatively correlated. They should all be positively correlated as is implied by a unidimensional scale where all the variables measure a single common factor. And so in this cal calculator here, we can see this when we scroll up to uh, our data. So those are the raw data here. Those are not real data. Those are just made up. And you can see that the last column, there are three columns for each variable, y1, y2, and y3. And the last column has all negative numbers. So I fabricated those numbers to all be negative, meaning they are reverse coded, so to say. And so in this calculator, we can actually check for that. So it has an option that says check keys, question mark. And so here I entered false to get this negative Cronbach's alpha for illustration. But if I change this to true, then and I recompute my Cronbach's alpha, then at the bottom now I should get something that looks better. So you can see here now that now the all item Cronbach's alpha is 0.788 because now this item has been recoded. So the uh, calculator checked for negative coding. So say the, the routine here and um, found out, oh, this doesn't make sense that the last item is negatively correlated with the other ones. It should be recoded and then as a result, of recoding it, we get results that make a lot more sense. So the all item Cronbach alpha is now positive and in a range that is pretty decent for three items, for a three item scale 0.788. And then the other ones you can see now, if one is deleted, alpha will still be positive and alpha will not be higher if one of the items is deleted. So they're all um, supposed to be in there, so to say. So. This shows you when you get a negative Cronbach's alpha, the first thing that you should check is whether your items have been properly recoded. If that is the case, then there must be some other kind of data error. There's basically no other way that you could get a negative Cronbach's alpha. So say um, other than you have a data error or you're analyzing the wrong variables, maybe your data set didn't get imported correctly into your software that you're using, but there must be some kind of error because by definition Cronbach's alpha has to be between zero and one. And if it's negative, then it's a matter of the correlations being not what they should. So check your inter-item correlations, look at 
um, whether there are any negative correlations among the variables for which you want to compute alpha. And so if there are any negative covariances or correlations, then that is the issue. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about Cronbach's Alpha. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel and also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free videos and workshops and feel free to leave a comment in the comment section as well and I'll see you next week.